this mm. one. Really? I get five. Right. I don't know what our problem is. There's extra folks over there? So yeah. yeah. And cross. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. That's what we were at. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 We're in the middle of Lincoln. They still, I mean, it's, well, we're not around the downtown or anything, but there was still a, uh, they didn't have the towers line right, so it took us six to nine weeks to complain. They went out uh, two weeks ago and realigned the tower, and now we have two jobs. I don't know why it was so hard, but they got me to now it works for But yeah, I don't know where they are. But the well, conversations are good. Oh, yeah. they are very good tonight. But also the test yeah. for assignment. He's the same battery. Sure. The French cook has one to buy battery because they always set the key. Oh, no. I think I put another one to buy Good evening. Welcome to the good October 2010 <laughs> Omaha Linux Users Group meeting. <laughs> Hi, Chad. Somebody just, text, somebody just texted good evening to you. Yes. Um, <laughs> good evening. Tonight, Craig's going to talk about uh, Thin Clients. Our friends from Eagle Software are going to be here too to uh, show the wares. Uh, let's see. Any news of importance? Google TV. Google TV is coming out. Uh, Logitech should have their announcement tomorrow. Sony's, I believe, is Thursday or Friday because theirs are going to be built into the TV. Oh, wait, so Google is working with a number of different hardware vendors to bring yes. that to market? Yes. And Sony is one of them? So I thought Google's motto was don't be evil. Why are they working with Sony? Uh, hey, he's got a point. That's what he's hey, you know, gets. Do, do a search for the Sony timer sometime. Sony timer. Yes, it's a uh, it's a mythical device that Sony the builds into all their devices all that happening. after a certain amount of time it stops working, so you have to go buy a new Sony. No, just <laughs> put, a, just put a line oh. through that not to fill out. <laughs> so that they don't fill it out. I think we're filling this out. I just want to count. I don't really care. Oh, you are. I don't. All right. Uh, let's see. I want to answer that. <laughs> Website's been pretty stable. Mailing list has been rather interesting. A lot of Roku talk I've noticed the last day or two. That's been that's been fun to read. Yeah. That's been very fun to read. Because I have actually been thinking about canceling my digital cable subscription and maybe even my cable subscription. I didn't realize there were as many people like me that dropped their cable or satellite. I well, I'm considering. I've I've been considering it for There's a while. A few people on, on the, yeah. the big the big the big thing that I always see as a barrier for a lot of people who don't want to cancel is sports. Like sports still have all the majority of the uh, uh, of the agreements for cable for watching things. I gotta have my football. Board. Yeah. <laughs> what if somebody makes a deal with major uh, with the uh, NFL? Then I probably could get away. I mean MLB. That's, that's base, already available. That's baseball. People that's already real. watch that. That's not for the whole year. What is it like? 150 bucks a year for Major League Baseball? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Thank God, large corporations in the world are concerned with furthering our entertainment dollar. Right? <laughs> yes. All the other problems are apparently solved. Would have been neat to have that in that TED talk about data visualization. Yes, that's right. How much? I should send. I'll send that out to the list. That okay. was. That was good. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. That's about the only hardware stuff I've noticed in the list lately. I only get about eight to ten spam messages to the list a day. You don't see them because I get to clean them up every day. So thank you. Kudos to me. That's why I pay John the big bucks. <laughs> Did he finally break a thousand dollars a month? Let's not go crazy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have anything. Oh, um, is there anything? Let's see. Oh, oh, no, that's long ago. Oh, VP President, give us knowledge. IT's future form. Drop some knowledge IT's on future you. form? Uh, well, f oh, yeah. If you're a member or. No, the a future form is open to anybody. Okay. Can you get out of your uh, thing for a second? Yeah. Pull that up? Should we go farm? But, uh, <laughs> not Farmville. Oh. Uh, an uh, event, some of you might be interested, is our upcoming AIM IT Futures Forum, aiminstitute.org slash ITFF. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to spell institute. You and me both, dude. I misspelled it ten times a day. Okay, so aim institute. ITFF. ITFF. Forever. Forever. IT forever. IT Futures Forum. Our speaker is Joseph Grenny. He just wrote a book, The In Influencer, The Power to Change Anything. And uh, we have registration for it. It's in uh, La Vista coming up on November 9th. It should be pretty interesting. He gave a little intro video on uh, on the topic. It's, it's pretty interesting. So uh, take a look at that if that's something that uh, you're interested in. 
Uh, John mentioned Infotech. We are in the final planning stages for the Infotech conference for next year. That's coming up. That's April something or other. I don't know. Get that on your calendar. Around my birthday. It's, it's all, we always make it around Craig's birthday, so you can remember it easily. Um, <laughs> uh, there's a sign-up sheet being passed around. Uh, again, AIM is a nonprofit organization, and uh, one of the things that we report on to our board and to our stakeholders is the uh, number of community members that we serve in a year in our various technology functions. This counts as one of them. You don't have to put yeah. your real name. I don't care if you put Elvis Presley in there. I just want to count at the end of the day. So please uh, put, put some mark on that paper so I can count it at the end of the day. Then I can give that number to our board, and the boss likes me. So it, it all works out good. And uh, yeah, machine. Why are we pulling my blog up? Because you have a book. Oh, well, that's right. Yeah, it's not at the bottom there. That one? Oh, yep. I did build one of these. Oh yeah, talk about that, John. Uh, it's a it runs uh, Open Word. Um, it's just like a ten dollar sound card and an Asus router. Uh, it's controlled from my. Android phone or my laptop or anything remotely. It just plays streaming audio. It's pretty neat. You know, it's all for less than 60 bucks. I have an actual Wi-Fi radio that was purpose built for that, and I paid about $150 for it about a year and a half ago. Those have now come down in price to about 100 but this does the same thing, except my Wi-Fi radio. Um, actually has an alarm clock in it. So that's what I actually wake up to in the morning. But that is, it's, it's pretty neat. Um, it doesn't work very well when I try to take it to other people's houses because it's only set up for my wireless network. So I can't actually log into it because I have no idea how to get, because the, inter the uh, other interfaces aren't active, only the wireless is active. So uh, I might bring it in, retrain it up for the lab so people can take a look at it, play with it a little bit. But it actually puts out some pretty good sound out of a $10 sound card. So, yes? Now, you say you have one that you bought and you use that as your uh, alarm clock? Yes. Do you want to see that one? Use, couldn't you use, say, Ron to use? Yes, you could. But there's no snooze button on that. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the wife acceptance factor about having the alarm clock. <laughs> You'll learn that one day. Yeah, you'll learn that one. You'll learn that one and the two most important words you'll learn in life. No. Yes, dear. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, Craig, do you want to go ahead and start talking now? Well, we can also pimp. Start talking. Pimp what else? Oh, yeah. That right there. That's what the book I was showing you. Yeah, no, I wanted to make sure that everybody has a chance to see it. I see Adam, it. Adam wrote Thanks, it. Guys. I helped review it. You did? And so did John. And so did John. Okay. Adam can sign it. Small <laughs> cheesecake. Cheesecake. Small cheesecake. You can have some cheesecake. Cheesecake. <laughs> okay. How many people don't know Craig? Craig, introduce yourself. <laughs> Craig works for Miller Public Schools. His last name is Wolf. John introduced Craig. John introduced me. I can run with that. Thank you. He's been in Olug as long as I have. It's probably as long as Adam had something. I think longer. 2000. I don't remember. 2000, 2001, okay. somewhere in there. A decade. Yep. A We're decade. all lifers. We're all lifers. <laughs> yes, I uh, I work for Miller Public Schools. I'm a district level tech. Um, I have my hands in just about everything that plugs into the network. So I've got a, I, my knowledge is about 25 miles wide and about two feet deep. That way at least I know what I'm talking about sometimes. Um, how many people out here know the difference? And no, you two can't say a word mm -hmm. right now. How many people out here know the difference between a thin client and a zero client? I did not up until about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Enlighten me. Thin clients. Thin clients have an operating system, but rely heavily on some other computer, its server, to fulfill its traditional comp computational roles. So. We could take this box, put Ubuntu on it, strip it completely down to where it has network, and that's it. And then it can rely upon the server. Whereas a zero client, no OS. You pull the hard drive out of this, you boot it off the network. That could be considered a zero client. Now in the back, which a lot of you have already got a chance to play with and look at, are these panel devices. 
These are the. Should you pass one around? Come on, Vanna. You want to pass it around? Yeah. Chuck it up here, Cole. You know, uh, I've dropped it down the stairs before. I've never trumped it before, though. <laughs> That's good to know. I assume it survived the fall. Oh, yeah. It worked great. The, uh, these are neat because they use very little electricity. There's no moving parts. Nothing. It is a box that boots to the it network. It comes in chrome. And it comes in chrome, if you'd like. That's, a, that's the executive version. Let me push it. Five dollars more. No, ten dollars. It is. It's Take it one that's bedazzled. Flames. 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 <laughs> I want to see one bedazzled. I said, Evan, let me see one bedazzled. For the size. crystal. For those yeah. that, that want to see it. Is that what some people oh, used to call a discless workstation as well? Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. everything old is new again, right? Yeah. Other than the fact old. that it's got a good chunk of, of weight to it, it's there's it there's nothing to it. Mm. It is. There's pretty. no fan in there. Nope. No. There's no processor in there. There is nothing. You can't assign these MAC addresses or IP addresses or anything. They rely on DHCP to get their IP address. Wow, that is. There's a brick. nothing in there that you can program. You can type. Oh, no, it's it's surprisingly heavy. And um, these. I don't know if these particular ones are, but the Pano does make some that are dual monitor capable. Because <laughs> that was an important item. Oh, that was an important item uh, for oh, USB. display port for us. Um, as we it's look at man. look at alternatives to the fat clients, mm -hmm. since we're not getting more people and we're getting more crap bought and put in the district, we're looking at some alternatives, and these these are a viable alternative. Um, problem for us is, is these are a VMware only. At this point, no, no. Yes. You want to tell them tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. they will be Hyper B capable. Oh good lord! Give me a real. <laughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow. Anyhow. That's Microsoft, right? <laughs> That's that micro crap. That Microsoft. <laughs> yes, I am biased. Microsoft hard. sucks. <laughs> okay, so will you, will you repeat that for the Ustream users? They probably didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. No. Nah, the, uh, Not the Microsoft sucks part. Oh, I thought that's what you <laughs> Oh, the fact that as of as tomorrow, tomorrow there will be an announcement that VMware, or uh, the Panologics will support Hyper-V as well as VMware. So you have an alternative should you, you want to go that route. So difference between thin client and zero client. You want a Lego version. Now, for the, for the purpose of my presentation, I'm just going to call them thin clients to make life easy for us and me. And that covers both. Okay. Yeah, so we'll just... We understand. So, the ones that I'm going to touch on, and that uh, Eagle's kind enough to help me touch on, is going to be the Panologic devices that we're looking at. Um, HP builds some some zero client and thin client pieces, and Wix. So, and we've got uh, Eagle's got a couple couple different uh, Wix type terminals in the back. So, some of the software items I'm I'm just going to touch on is the VMware View. You've got Citrix Zen Desktop, and I didn't put it on here, but you've got um, Citrix Thin App as well. Um, Open Thin Client, which personally is one of my favorites, and No Machine NX. Um, who's, a, who's heard of OpenThinClient.org? Okay. We played with this one extensively when we started down this road, and it's very cool. Um, no Machine NX. Anybody heard of that one? I know. Is that similar? You don't count. That's Tony? similar to Sorry. the uh, NX protocol for X Windows, where you can. I believe so. Um, that one's really cool. There is a um, there's a it's company a, right around the corner from you where can connect to X Windows where we work. SSH and stuff. Um, More than just that, they're running that exclusively. They don't have any fa on the desktops SSH type tunnel. in their company. Everything runs the no machine devices. They run a thin Ubuntu. Every machine that comes in gets Ubuntu. They've got a custom Ubuntu that they've put together that is stripped down to nothing. And they run this everywhere. If somebody gets a laptop, they get an Ubuntu laptop with no machine on it and a uh, Sprint card. And they all run off of the Sprint card. And that's these are all applications that run on some host operating system, giving you access to server resources. Yes. You still have to have VMware View, a box. You still gotta have a server on the back end. Well, sure, but on the I mean, VMware View is not an OS. No. That you're just gonna load up onto a box like this. So I'm, I'm gonna jump. Jump right, right in here. Come on, Tony. Jump right oh, in here, Tony. Uh, this is this is Tony Foster Tony. from Eagle Software. Help so, me out here. 
Sure. So VMware View, it sits on a server and it provides connections, be they RDP connections, PC over IP connections, terminal service connections, whatever, to either desktops or servers serving remote desktop protocols. Same with Citrix Zen Desktop. It either connects to a server and feeds it out or does CAL licensing and you get your desktops that way. Same with the rest of them. It doesn't necessarily have to be virtual. It's just the easiest way to do it. And like I have up here, by no means comprehensive. This is just what I have a little bit of knowledge of. <coughs> so, to make life easy, I'm just going to, I don't know if there's anything really much left to say about the panels. Well, if you want, I guess we can get the GUI up here. Um, we could do that. We could. Um, I tell you what, why don't we do the GUI, At we'll the run end. that, well, we'll run that up as we move forward, but help me out with the panels. We've got, sure. how do they, list price on them, some stuff, stuff of that nature. You want to, that's where the, come on Jay, come on Jay. Here, I'm on, I'm on panelogic.com, I'm going to the online store. Uh, list, list price on, on black ones, about 319 a box. Uh, maintenance on those is about $59 a year. Uh, one of the good things is uh, anytime you buy a box, you get the software on the back end for free, the panel manager. Uh, and and then the, ma the maintenance you're talking about is software updates to the server software that runs to support yes, them. Yes, it runs okay. a box. Currently you uh, are running XP with one box and you do dual monitors with that. Windows 7 right now, uh, you have to use two monitors for, or two boxes for that. Uh, it's still under the same maintenance cost, but they're getting ready to update that as well, so you can have run that under one box as well. Uh, one of the things, oh, you want to grab that dual monitor? Oh, oh sure. Uh, the dual monitor is actually just a USB drive on it. I mean, I'm sorry, USB port uh, with that VGA on it as well. Uh, when you're programming, you can do all kinds of programming with the USB ports. You can lock them down. Uh, you can make them go for certain devices. Uh, this is the dual monitor uh, support. You've got your USB connection uh, and then your uh, your DVI. Uh, so you can make like a webcam work, but not a flash drive. Yeah. Yes. Yep. You can restrict it that cool. way. Another thing you can do is you don't have. You've got three USB ports on them. If you run out of USB ports, you can actually put a USB hub on. Uh, and we actually have worked with banks that have done this. Uh, they can run their Check 21 scanner, their uh, credit card scanner, their uh, license scanner, you know, their USB printers. You know, they have a whole slew of uh, items that actually hang off one of these panel devices. So it works extremely well. Uh, another really good thing that works with these is a classroom environment. And depending on how you program the back end of it, uh, you can have somebody that's sitting at an executive desk. When he turns it on, he gets the exact same desktop every single time. Uh, or you can set it up in a classroom environment where they turn it on and actually pick a desktop from a pool. Uh, they grab that pool, uh, that pool desktop uh, in the back end. The ESX host uh, actually spins up another desktop. So you, only, you always have a few waiting for those that log in. Uh, and then when they're done with it, you can actually have it destroyed 10 minutes after they log out. So they can log off of that, uh, and if they're logged off for more than 10 minutes, it's actually going to delete their desktop and actually spin up a new one. Uh, you can redeploy after a class, or if you have like a semester where everybody uses the same desktop every time, you can actually assign them a virtual desktop. When the class is over with, you just wipe them all clean and you start over. So, Yes. So another cool thing about this is how many people in here use Active Directory? Cool. How many people in here use OpenLDAP? <laughs> cool. So you can actually tie in uh, Pano Manager into OpenLDAP and have that pull all of your user accounts and everything from OpenLDAP. There's not a dependency on directory services like Windows or Novell Z directory. You can use either Active Directory, OpenLDAP, or eDirectory on here. So. so you got one of these hooked up to a monitor pulls up a Windows 7 desktop or whatever, mm -hmm. huh? that authentication then can auth against an open LDAP database. Yep. The actual operating system runs through there. So the, the panel manager takes care of all that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the panel manager currently sits on VMware's ESX or ESXi format until tomorrow, where it's actually going to work with uh, Hyper-V as well. Uh, now with VMware, obviously, like I said, it can sit on the free format or the free version of the ESXi or a licensed version of ESX or ESXi, uh, whichever you, you guys have, depending on your version level of VMware. Uh, 
So everything then is run through the panel manager, all your connections and everything. But if you want to go in VMware with that one next step higher, and you want to actually get VMware View, uh, you get a little more granular with some of the storage on the on the back end of it, and you can actually have a, a View Composer, which View Composer allows you to have like a gold standard copy. So if you have everybody in customer service has the same kind of desktop, uh, they get the same applications and everything, you can have a gold standard of that desktop. Everybody's going to have their own little storage area for their personal preferences, preferences, but their original desktop is the same. That's called a gold image. Uh, with View Composer, you can update that image, that one gold image, and then it actually pushes that image uh, change out to all mm -hmm. the users when they log in. <laughs> so that's with View Composer, and uh, actually you get ThinApp with that as well. ThinApp actually, uh, obviously, you know, if you have multiple machines that have you know, the same Microsoft Office or something, ThinApp allows you to only have one instance of that storage, uh, so you don't take up all your storage using using all your desktops. So. Uh, another cool thing with ThinApp is, how many different uh, versions of Java do people need to use in their uh, 400 day -day apparently, lives? according to uh, Oracle. La Larry. Yeah, <laughs> according to Larry. Cool. So <laughs> with... Reality zero. <laughs> <laughs> so with ThinApp, you can actually sit there and packetize each version of Java mm -hmm. and have it sitting there in your application list, so to speak. And, oh, this one requires Java version 7.1.6. Okay. It'll automatically pull that one in and start using it. So you can actually bind it to applications that require Java version it's whatever. Dependencies. Yeah. And it'll automatically create that dependency and everything for you and launch the correct version of Java. So you can do some really cool stuff. About the only thing you can't do is um, take uh, VMware ThinApp and ThinApp uh, things that have drivers. So SQL something very hard to uh, ThinApp because it has ties and hooks into the operating system, very similar to drivers. Active Directory you can't ThinApp because it has hooks into the uh, operating system like drivers as well. Anything else you can ThinApp. Hmm. Obviously, virtual desktops aren't a one-shoe-fits-all solution. Uh, there's a lot of individuals that uh, virtual desktop is not actually going to be a viable solution for them. If you got somebody that's hammering away on CAD or something like that, uses a lot of processing or something, they're, they're still going to need a fat client. Uh, because if you have a whole room of CAD users, the back-end box, you know, your, where your ESX host in the back or now Hyper-V host in the back is going to have to have so many resources that it's not actually going to be cost-effective for you to actually virtualize those desktops. Uh, but I'd say probably you know 80-85% of all users can be virtualized. One of the good things that Panel has come out with is obviously their Panel Manager. We can access that via the outside world, either through a URL or they actually have a USB stick. Uh, this USB stick is you can program in the uh, where actually you want to hit that URL. So if I'm traveling and I have a virtual desktop back in my office and I go down to the, uh, the business office in, in the hotel that I'm, I'm staying in, I plug this into a USB drive, it sees it, points me to the URL, I actually log in through the URL into my virtual desktop, I have my virtual desktop right there at that station that's in the hotel. Now when I'm done working on my virtual desktop or if I want to do it from home I can do that as well and I unplug my USB. It, security wise it actually backs out everything and takes it off that fat client so there's no there's no footprint left of, of what I had or what I was doing is that a writable key or is that a read-only key that is a writable key so yes. you can put additional stuff on there as well you cannot pull off the pano uh, yeah it's like a hidden partition there. I'm just more concerned yeah, about the hotel and getting malware on <laughs> You can, you can actually you can you can actually lock it to where you can't write to okay. it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it works just fine with it locked. I've used it many a times locked. So the good thing with that, you know, if you've got an executive or somebody that actually has a laptop and they travel with it and they lose the laptop, obviously they're going to have a hard drive. Uh, you know, what kind of uh, violation is that going to be with some of your company's data or something like that? Data theft. And yeah. USB litigation. drive, accessing a virtual desktop that actually sits back in your environment. Uh, 
you're not going to have any issue with that if they lose this USB drive because it's going to be useless to the next person unless they want to use it for a little bit of a storage device. Makes it interesting for like coming back in the country. We need to search your laptop. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. So, um, I know this isn't quite down the piano road, but I'll wander back here and get to thin client real quick. So like you said, it did say that the uh, the pano is a zero client. There's no footprint, no moving parts or anything like that. So do they a, get do they get really warm or is it just? No, actually, a pano box uses three percent the power of uh, a normal desktop, but it doesn't heat up or do anything because there's no moving parts in it. Mm. There's nothing going on in the box, so there's there's no heat generated. Okay. So yeah. So cool. I'll I'll go down that uh, path just a little bit uh, that Jay was talking about. This is a Weiss Thin Client. You could give your executives one of these, hook up your smart card or Wi-Fi access point or tether, whatever you're using, open it up. I am actually connected into the office right now. Have uh, one of my desktops at the office on the screen. Works great. Uh, I actually have VMware View up on there right now. And, okay, I'm traveling along, I lose it, I drop it, I whatever, this disappears, and poof, all my data is back at the office. I can't store anything on here, so I don't even have the temptation of an executive trying to put files on the local hard drive because it's easier. That runs a Windows XP embedded. That's the OS that's on that device. And they make these with... Uh, several different Linux flavors of embedded as well. Okay. Just what I was going to ask. Yes. Um, if you go to Weiss, they have, I think, three different flavors of these. XP embedded, um, what's Windows 7's Star uh, small footprint thing? Star Starter like edition. Starter. Yeah, it's something like that. It's a real small footprint. Basic. And Starter. then they have... But it doesn't really matter what that OS is, yeah. right? Because you're going to be connecting to yeah. your server. Correct. And Absolutely. And this That's actually it. has a write lock on it. There's no hard drive in this guy. So um, it has a memory card. I don't know how many people have spent a lot of time doing writes to a memory card. After a while, if you're actually writing to the memory card, the uh, Bristol flip-flops in the memory card wear out and you start developing holes in memory, and your memory card goes bad. So Weiss has a locking mechanism in here that actually goes through and says, no writes allowed to the hard drive. So any changes I were to make right now to this uh, laptop, completely blown away when I power it off. Mm. It's writing it to RAM instead of to the uh, flash drive in here. So I can take this and go on the road and do whatever else I want. Another cool thing with VMware View is, let's say, let's go back to that scenario of um, CEO traveling with a laptop. Yay for that. I can have a image that gets checked out. So my CEO checks out an image of his desktop at the office and checks it into his laptop. A, I can bind it to his laptop based on MAC address or any number of other qualities. Um, I can set an expiration time on it. So my CEO, Bob, only gets to take uh, the laptop with him, and that desktop can only be checked out for seven days. If he doesn't get back to the office in seven days and connect his computer into the network, that image expires. Hmm. Expires. That's Boom. Cool. It, it does no good. And the You're supposed to bring that back. The entire time it's sitting on the laptop that he took it on, it's sitting there encrypted. So, oh my gosh, hacker got a hold of it. They broke in. Now they're trying to get into his laptop image. We've got an MD5 encrypted uh, desktop sitting there. They got to do an awful lot of poking to break into that uh, actual desktop image. And after seven days, and I don't know how many people have done the math on brute force attacks on an MD5. Uh, encrypted hard drive, it takes a little, little longer than seven days. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, the image is no good anymore anyway. The mm -hmm. image is expired. So you can actually control, okay, you've got seven days. If you don't check it in, your stuff's gone. Okay, that laptop you can't leave the country with. 
that laptop technically you could leave the country with, you're going to have to connect in and make sure it hasn't expired yet. Okay. So leave, leave it behind. Yeah. <laughs> what, is, what, is one of the, what is one of those Weiss laptops run? I, I think this one was 1300. Really? I, I didn't think it was that high. Oh wait, no, no, seven and a half. Yeah. 750, 800-ish. And yeah. the reality of that was we bought that two years ago. Yeah. Prices subject to change without notice. Yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, if, if it's cost effective that way, but it depends on your, your business. You know, if yeah. your business, if your data is that sensitive, that's a that's a logical choice. Yeah. All yeah. it takes is one headline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For all the mailers you have to send out to all the customers that the laptop goes off. Mm -hmm. I'll just get rid of now, your sales. Not only that, yeah. but then the, the security that you got to put in for those customers after the fact to get their trust back. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, I had, a, I had a mortgage exactly company right. lose some of my data, so I got a free credit check for a year, and that's that's not cheap either. Yeah. So. There's a new Weiss uh, one going on eBay for 680. 680. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 11 point, a little small, 11.6 inch screen, so it's their ultra portable. Okay. Yep. That's a cool idea. That, that's, mm -hmm. that's. Yeah. Really neat. Yes. And. Uh, obviously, virtual desktops, you got to have the infrastructure in the back end. You know, that's going to have to be a little more beefy. SAM device sitting on the back end. Because one thing you got to realize is uh, one of those and another MacBook. with virtual <laughs> desktops, you actually hit more IOPS on the SAM than you do with the virtual server. So take that into consideration. Panologic says uh, you can get five to eight uh, virtual desktops per core. So if you've got two quad cores, you can get 40 to 60 ish. Wow. Uh, virtual desktops remember. per machine uh, for yeah. ESX host. Now that's that's the ESX host with the older uh, processor uh, configuration, not the new to Halen processors, which get uh, approximately three times the performance in a virtual environment than they used to. So you know, quite possibly with a nice beefy box and good sized memory, uh, you could be pushing you know 70, 80 virtual desktops per one piece of hardware. Yeah. Yeah, you would. That's gonna, you know, we'll obviously you got well, server. Yeah. So it's still okay. Cost think, consider that, but consider. Yeah. Oh yeah. We bought, we bought for our, we did a, a Citrix Zen Desktop proof of concept for AutoCAD. AutoCAD, a lab of 30 machines. We bought two $15,000 servers. That was 64 gigs of RAM, 16 processors in these. A piece. In each one. Um, and like I said, they're about fifteen grand a piece, fifteen to eighteen. Um, sixteen like cores, sixteen sockets. Sixteen cores. Okay. Uh, four, four quad, quad core, core processors, which okay. now I can get them with four six core, six core six processors. Core. Yep. So Absolutely. I've got more horsepower in that. And we were shooting for just two gig of RAM per per desktop. And but that clients? included. Yeah. How many desktops are you trying to push with those? Thirty thirty desktops, plus. Um, the I think it was like four servers, ser four virtual servers oh, to run okay. that back end. So it was two physical boxes, four virtual servers, plus 30 desktops, all running in these two boxes. What were the what were the servers doing? Servers run Citrix. You've got the Citrix Zen desktop server. You've got the oh okay. You've got and those, management. Those management. themselves That's just are management. virtualized right inside mm -hmm. an image on one of these big. Okay. Yep. Right, so we had two servers on each one, and then we ran 15 desktops on each one, uh, and it ran, it ran adequately. And the fact that our, the students were able to actually go home and run AutoCAD from home, yeah. the students were were ecstatic. And what would what your client look like? Uh, we were just using the basic desktops they had in the rooms. And then the fat Citrix clients. software. Fat clients. Yeah, just with the Citrix software to access the. There's a there's like a, a three meg client to install to give even better performance than running it strictly through a browser, and we needed oh, that because of the AutoCAD. Oh, I see. Otherwise, yeah. it's just a window, of, in a browser onto a desktop on the server. Yes. And you were doing, uh, you were doing full desktop virtualization in this yes. situation. You weren't doing individual like application Apps. streaming or anything like that. No, Why not? we we it was a decision we decided to make um, after talking to. We, we worked with a company here in Oma called the M&A Group. Yeah. Worked really closely with them. And after talking to them, we decided that uh, 
Zen Desktop was the best way to go because AutoCAD is such a beast. Oh, because was, that was AutoCAD. It's such was AutoCAD beast. Specific. Okay. Yeah, that was, we figured if we can make AutoCAD work on this yeah. crap, <laughs> we can make anything work. Okay. And AutoCAD worked. But when we sat down and figured out the cost for all three high schools, the server hardware, the infrastructure, and, and all of the costs associated with it, and the yearly cost, um, all of a sudden, all our funds dried up. Um, so, you can do AutoCAD, even though it's not supported. It's not. It'll work. Yeah. It does. It does work. It'll work. Yeah. Uh, and they, the reason that they shy away from that just because it's so huge that they know it's going to push the boundary for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, in virtualizing desktops, nobody sees uh, immediate ROI when they implement. Right. Because right. you got to buy hard, hardware in the back. Yeah. Absolutely. But. But in three years, instead of having to refresh everything, you're not having to do that. You might add another virtual server in the back end, get a little more horsepower in there, but you're not having to go out and touch everything. The management piece of it works incredibly well because you don't have to leave your desk to, to manage those to make those changes. You can do all that from your desk. You know, you're know, you not doing the whole sneaker net where you're getting up, going over, reconfiguring somebody's, or actually going over, picking up somebody's machine, bringing it back to your office, reconfiguring it and then bringing it back out and deploy it, you can do that right from your desk. We did that a number of times. We'd, uh, we'd put the kids in front of the machines, the virtual the virtual desktops, let them run AutoCAD, they'd go, well, this isn't working right, or none of us have a printer. Okay, that evening we'd shut all of their, all of those desktops down, we'd fire up the gold image, we would make changes to that image, shut it down, lock it back up, fire up all 30 desktops. And we, in, in 20 minutes, 30 minutes tops for any of the changes that we made. We were able to change everybody's desktop to, to fix the issue. No, no, didn't even have to get my fat butt off the chair. And that's what, <laughs> that's one of the reasons we were looking. We've got a problem where the teachers in the rooms are going through and making changes and then yelling at us that stuff doesn't work. That was another reason we were looking at doing it. Right. And this was going to be a way I to solve this, that. I this, come and fix it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh no, the classic <laughs> one is, hey, so and so came in with the new dip, with the uh, new AutoCAD software, and I loaded on all the machines, but nothing works now. Well, why did you do that? Because well, he handed me the CD. That's what we were trying to get away from, as well as as you know, the desktops. Instead of spending seven hundred dollars or six hundred bucks for the desktops we normally buy for the whole district, the desktops we run the AutoCAD stuff on is a twelve to thirteen hundred dollar desktop. So, you know, and we're having to do that every three years because AutoCAD's requirements jump substantially every three years. So fine. I spend fifteen thousand dollars every three years to add another physical server on the backside, spread myself out again, and I'm fine. Yes. Another cool thing that uh, Pano's come out with, and this is a I don't care about DR, I just want desktops and lots of them, is a uh, desktop server bundle. You get the Windows licensing for your desktops, you get the Pano devices, and you get a back-end server filled with RAM, memory processors, and hard drive space, and I can't remember what the uh, cost on that bundle is, but you get it all and you're ready to go. It's cool. Everything but monitors, keyboard, and mice. You're know? talking about the Starbucks that they have? Yeah, Express 1650. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think it was a little over 15 grand. So yeah. 16, 16 and a half sounds about right. Pano Express, 50 yeah. seats. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's yep. cool. And, and you can actually expand that out. You can sit there. And so you can't use that as your ramp up, just boom, that's your start. go, and then you can continue yep. on. Now, the caveat there is you don't have the V-Motion and everything. If You've you got, wanted, you're living on one box. If yeah. you lose that piece of hardware, yeah. you got Every 50 you got 50 virtual desktops that are down. Yep. Yeah. And you can use that as a ramp up and build into it where you buy that and then, okay, you know, it's been a year or two years, we're ready to make the next investment. We've got everybody bought in on this. They're seeing the uh, return on investment now. Let's put a SAN underneath this and get another uh, ESX box in there. And you can just slide in another ESX box and the SAN, move the virtual machines off the local storage, and all of a sudden you're now living across uh, servers and you're not down to, I've lost a box, help, it's, I've lost a box, they just moved over to another machine. We just did that uh, um, over the weekend two weeks ago. We lost heating, we lost cooling in uh, our main distribution. You were well aware of that, if I remember. I, yes, we were. Yes. 
Um, we got multiple emails stating the fact. Yes. <laughs> yeah, my data domain device is going hot, hot, hot. <laughs> um, we lost, we lost one of our uh, Citrix servers, and the other two, other other than the servers that were living on that box, I had to move my hand Monday when I came in. I had to bring them up on these other two boxes, but we were up about 45 minutes after we got in that morning, even though I had a physical server down until we could figure out how to get it, figure out which, which component was not happy anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, that, and that works great for not only in your production environment, but a DR environment. If you have all your desktops virtualized and you're replicating your data to another offsite facility, you lose your production facility, Okay, swing all your lines over, all your, your IPs where you're pointing over to the to the now the DR location. You spin the virtual desktops up over on the DR location. You can have people log in just like they they didn't have a lost of things. So, not only can uh, VMware and and Hyper-V and stuff like that protect your production servers by virtualizing and then doing some a DR with the virtual servers, but now you can start doing it with your desktops as well. So, works extremely well. Is this cool? That's cool. <laughs> this is this is why I get excited. This is what I get excited Where about. Where do the students store all their work in your system? Uh, in their home directories. We have their home directories map. When they logged into the Windows box, you logged into that box as yourself. And, and, and there wasn't any pushback that they don't take a copy with them somewhere? Take a copy of what? Auto? They're saying. They're saying it's up that. on the server. They can get to it from home. Because because they were virtualized, like he was saying, with the thumb driver or just hitting a web page, hitting a URL, they were able to hit that desktop. It was slow. I mean, running AutoCAD over our wide area network plus ESU's network plus the internet. Yeah, it was a little slow, but the fact that they had the ability to work from home. We have here's the best example. They have a kid with Tourette syndrome that was in the class when we were doing this POC, and he was going through a really bad time with it, and he actually was able, he was he was five weeks, four weeks behind in the class. He was able to catch up in the class, and he wasn't in the class. This kid, and he could do it at any time of the day or night. That, that was what was cool for me. The fact that I was able to help this kid who, for whatever reason right now, can't function to be able to learn. He was able to get caught up and get a grade in the class versus having to take an incomplete I'm sorry, that made me, that got me going. That's what I found cool about this. Psycho, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. This, 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 it really bothers me that, that after the fact, like I said, this was six months of my life. Six months of my life I dedicated to this POC to make this work. We found problems in our network configuration that the m &AO was helped us figure out and get straight so that this could be a success. And to hear that story from the teacher, that got me in my heart. That hit me in the chest. That got me excited. So this 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 is still a passion piece for me, and I still hope we can find a way to pay for this. Well, <sighs> I know we're told. I know we're mostly talking about land stuff. Yeah. Are we going to talk about some WAN solutions later in the presentation, or are we focused mostly on land? I, I, on, on that note, I will yeah. tell you that the panel box is a LAN environment box. Yeah. It is Perfect. not a WAN box. So it, it does not work well. You get a very, very poor user experience if you try to push that image over the sure. LAN. Sorry. And that is a current connotation. And that's pretty much all well, I'm designed saying to, is. Well, it was designed to do that. Clearly. Yeah, like, right. Well, well like, your, I mean, your you're zero talking clients. About. Your zero clients, yeah. Those are all going to have to be sure. land based. Right. But I mean, you're talking about and the solution that you're after in Miller Public Schools, like you said, to reduce administration costs, but also to allow access from wherever to these students going forward. Wherever, That's, whenever. Right. As important as the maintenance side. So you also have to address the WAN issue pretty heavily as well. Nothing I'm talking about tonight is specific to that. Okay. If it's capable of that, great. great. Okay. You know, um, I know I don't have any slides on it, so I'll, but I'll touch on this. We we rolled out a product a year ago called Stoneware. Now you know you talking about that. you've heard me talk about that, yeah. and I've shown some of this. Yeah. It's very cool. W combination of Stoneware and your Citrus or your VMware, because it integrates with both. You can do from one login, 
you can give people access to their home directories. you can give them access to their shared directories. you can give them access to their apps. and you can thin app you can bundle those apps up and force it out or send it out to them we played with doing this with open office and it worked and it worked pretty well the only thing we found with open office is because it's such a large app that we push it down and we leave it there so the next time they launch it we have it set for permanency it checks sees if it's still there and it fires it up on whatever device they're on so um that's a way that you can take this in my opinion you take all of this to that next level with something you give like them one spot you give them one URL. Hey, you go to the portal to get to all of your stuff. You set up the single sign-on. You set up all of your apps. You make them all accessible from there. And your users don't have to think. You give them what they need to do their jobs or what they need to accomplish. And yeah, that's my goal with Stoneware, is to give them all one place to go to do this or whatever. OK, cool. Once you got a question? No, I'll, I'll ask you later. OK. So, and I will also say that the uh, Weiss laptop is a great WAN device. I've actually taken it with me on uh, several business trips, and I can sit there and basically be at the office doing whatever I need to and not have to pull out my laptop and power everything up and do all that jazz. All I do is pull out the Weiss, power it on, and connect to whatever system I want to back at the office away we go. And I don't have a whole lot of extra fluff to go on. But yeah. fluff's nice when it comes to cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> fluff is nice when it comes to cheesecake. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go sit back down for a while, since okay. I know you got a lot more. And I, I, got, wanna, I, got I don't want to plug Eagle too much, but we do on the panel devices, if you're looking for some kind of deployment or if you want to test a deployment or something, we actually do loan out the boxes. So and then help you through the deployment on, you know, setting it up, seeing if it's going to work in your environment, and then letting you use the boxes for a month. So I can't say enough good things about these guys. Very cool. OK, so let's touch on some of the other hardware stuff. Um, got to play with some of the HP thin client and zero client stuff. It works really well, but their price is the 199 device in my opinion, it's a crappy box. I got to play with the basic version, and I got to play with the $400 version. The $400 version does a really good job, um, and it is. It's it's it's. It looks similar to the tall boxes you see in the back. It's very similar to those. It works well, but HP is very proud of their equipment, and well, they don't know C SEO very well. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. That's how um, wicked ugly you are. Yeah. These, I'll have the slides up there within a day or so or whenever I can get it to, to John or whatever. So that way you guys can hit the links. They're not that hard to find if you hit HP's website or, or wherever. I put them there. It's just a convenience to us. Um, they do have the USB connections. They do have the dual monitor. They'll work. Citrix, ICA, and RDP. Um, uh, we've already seen one of the Weiss terminals. My opinion, Weiss is the granddaddy of thin clients. I mean, come on, who hasn't seen a green screen? Okay, other than you, you're not allowed to answer. Who knew Weiss? <laughs> who knew Weiss was still a company? I, you know what? <laughs> Up until I went out to NFM about six years ago, I didn't realize they were still around. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this was kind of fun when I went out looking at looking at the Weiss stuff, VMware Citrix, and other interesting things. Uh, they've got a nice long list of of things that they can do. Um, dual video out, the Weiss laptop. I'm, that's just, I like that one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, trust me, I do. My boss gets mad and disappears for too long. <laughs> Dave? Yeah, when he knows that it's disappeared. Uh, it actually sits in my office underneath my desk. So he's just, he has to physically go look for it. Exactly. <laughs> it was logging to the server and disable that image. <laughs> <laughs> Glad he doesn't have a login. Um, VMware View. I personally don't know a whole lot about it, but you've heard quite a bit so far from from Tony and, and Jay a little bit. Correct me on and on anything I'm wrong. Windows desktops only. Correct. Um, kind of cool role based. For the ministry. foreseeable future. Um, Under NDA, yes. 
for the foreseeable Fair future, enough. yes. Fair enough. Um, Role-based administration, centralized desktop security, you can do it all from a single terminal, set them all up. Um, desktops are tied to users' identities and not to devices. That's a good, that's an important sentence. Yeah. Now, one of the things that, that you were saying, help me with, with the difference, because I'm going to touch on Citrix next. Well, wait till I get to the Citrix one, okay. and then we'll talk about the, the licensing piece that you sent me that okay. I yep. tried to type in here three different times and... It, it's it. a very, very fine thing. So. Yeah. Um, this is a piece that when I was looking at the VMware stuff and the VMware guys were talking to us, this PC, oh man, it did PC. up. PC up. PC over IP. Um, that's 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 truly cool. sped up communications. I, I played with it without it. I played with it with this. Holy crap. <laughs> um, so when I had sent these slides over to Tony just to just a cursory look over it. He says, you missed an important piece here. So I put this star here and added this page. I wasn't aware of this. PCOIP is actually made by this Teradeep. Teradeep, thank you, because that yes. wasn't what I was going to say. Bless you. <laughs> 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 um, I didn't realize that, that they, they, they licensed it for these guys. Um, Teradeep is actually its own company. VMware wanted it, but Teradeep wouldn't sell, so VMware partnered with them. So Dell, Hitachi, Tenzig, and there's this Tenzig. They've got one of the devices in the back. I don't know anything about it. It's just another, another alternative to the to the equipment that you can play with. Um, but that this was cool. I went out and looked at their site. Uh, it's impressive. So okay, Citrix then desktop. Still Windows desktops only. Um, one of the neat pieces off of their website was up to 500. Ritual. Oh, I wasn't going to say anything, Craig. I will. <laughs> I can't type. And it didn't tell me. Uh, desktops per server, depending on how you set them up. It's like, okay. Of course, the, uh, they don't tell you, you know, is this a beast or not. Um, supports client-side virtual desktops. There's a small client you can put on the remote system to help speed up communications. And that's what we were doing with the AutoCAD stuff. And that really made a significant difference. AutoCAD was bearable without the small client. With the client, it was very usable. It wasn't speedy, but it was usable. And it made a noticeable difference also internal to the district on our LAN. Um, so help me out. You, you sent me something very important with that when it comes to the licensing of these two. Because they these are both paid for items. Yes. So with Citrix Zen Desktop, um, you buy cats. You buy seats. So 30 um, seats and 30 people can use them at any yes. given time currently. Correct. VMware and VMware View, you deploy operating systems. So Zen, generally you have one image and everybody's pointing at that image. VMware View, I've got an image for Bob, an image for Tom, an image for Mike, so forth and so on. And each one of those are their own independent desktops. With Citrix Zen, if the core image crashes, everybody goes down. With VMware View, Bob. if Bob crashes, only Bob's server goes down. So there's a licensing model at play there where, OK, if you're not concerned about taking down 50 users in one shot or 500 users in one shot. Um, cool, go with Citrix. Cows are a whole heck of a lot cheaper than desktop licenses. He wasn't kidding on that one. Do you want to add anything to that, Jake? Uh, VMware View licensing is, is rather complex. Uh, how many people have our VMware environments now? Well, wow. nobody. All right. Yeah. Okay, just just to throw this out there, VMware actually is a Linux kernel, so. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, sort of. VMware View, depending on what you want to do, if you're if you have a, a licensed version of the ESX host, uh, it can be anywhere from uh, $2,500 up to $5,000 for that that actual host, uh, and then you can put as many virtual desktops on that as you want. If you were to do that, you're paying about $150 per VMware View uh, license per desktop, so about 150 bucks. Okay, if you want to basically grow as you go. You can pay $250 per user 
and then you can add as many hosts as you want. You're not having to buy that host license. You can just have as many hosts as you want that, that your environment needs to have, but that's 250 bucks per user as opposed to the 150. So it's kind of a checks and balances on where you, how you're how you gonna be setting your environment up and, and how you're gonna need it. So, plus there's some other caveats with view in there too that it gets a little complicated with how much, how you price it out. But. So these two are not cheap, but they do work really well. A um, couple of the items under Citrix that I was reading that I that were kind of cool. Uh, the Citrix FlexCast deliver the right desktop to any user on any device. Um, they've got a what? any device. Give me examples of any device. My Android smartphone. Yeah, that's uh, that's it's a Linux box. Oh. <laughs> My Palm smartphone. <laughs> don't, press, device don't press your luck. My toaster. The iPad. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Actually, the I iToaster. know several people who use uh, it on their iPad. Well, considering that uh, go to meeting and all that stuff's on the iPad, it's just only natural that that would be on there too. Um, I didn't know this one when I started when I started doing my reading. The Citrix HDX, flash multimedia and applications, 3D graphics, webcams, audio. Uh, it, it's just a part of their technology that they've developed, as far as I understand, that they've developed to make thing, the communication faster. It actually is the competition to PC over IP. Uh, there you so, go. So, uh, yes, I better come back up here. So, the way both of these work is they do the rendering on the server side. Screenshot it. And sit there and go, okay, I'm drawing a box here. And then they transmit only the pixels that need changed instead of yeah, transmitting that's, all the data that's over there. Citrix. And Citrix does it that way. PC over IP works it's, almost it's exactly the same way. It sits there and says, I'm rendering a box. I need Microsoft these pixels on. Microsoft our desktop. Yeah. Or TSC. So very cool. Makes sense. Thank you. That so that so because of that, you could, like they say, branch office delivery, you could theoretically be doing some of this stuff over the LAN because of that. Yeah, I, you know, one of the thoughts I had was if we truly went farther down this road in, at Miller, getting rid of the, uh, in the elementary schools, we're all Mac, except for these five people in the front office because of one application. So why the hell can't I just give everybody Macs? That way our, our maintenance for the building is all the same. We don't have to play any fancy games. And for that app, they can play this game. Oh, right. Why not? Because there's a Citrix client for Mac that yeah. can deliver specific applications, host on a server, and the display goes. Why not? So I guess if this is part of where I can envision things going, should they decide to continue down that road. A Citrix client for Linux? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. There is a Citrix I ran it at CAS when we were doing the Citrix stuff. There is a VMware viewpoint for Linux as well. Okay, Mac. so now let's get into the fun one. This is the one when we started down the road of looking at things like Stoneware and, and, and VMware and Citrix and all of this other stuff. We started <coughs> looking, we looked at the GNOME machine, we looked at Open Thin Client. This is really cool. If you get the chance to play with this, you can actually, one of the guys I work with, he set up an infrastructure over his lunch hour. He downloaded Open Thin Client, threw it onto his threw it onto his uh, Windows XP box, pulled it off the network, plugged it into a switch with another laptop, and started playing with it. Then he realized, oh wait, I gotta have a DHCP server. Okay. And this is a non-network guy. He was just a desktop support guy that did this over his lunch hour. <laughs> it was very cool to see this work, and it worked pretty well. Um, there is a company you can purchase. They have their the free version. You can also purchase support from them if you need to go that way. It is a Linux-based operating system. It's just a Java. It's a Java app. The whole thing is a Java app. Um, it boots a. If I can remember right, because this has been about a year and a half ago. It boots a very light. Um, Ubuntu OS and you deploy your stuff into that just what you need into that 
so you know from the server side i'd set up and deploy open off or open office writer or firefox or whatever just the piece i need we could take a box we were taking hp d five thirty s which are about six seven years old five hundred megs of ram in them put them on this internal network with the open thin client server and I could boot these things up in about what was it, 28 seconds to a login window. 28 seconds booting over the network to a login window. It took another seven seconds after that. So 35 seconds, I could have somebody sitting at a desktop and be able to work. It worked really well. This is the route I still think we'll end up going eventually. We gotta get a little tighter with money so they'll let me, they'll let me play with it some more again. Why? Maybe you already said this. I'm sorry. What What were the reasons that you just aren't going with that right now that you don't know yet? The district still has money to pay for things like Microsoft Office, Microsoft Windows. Oh, I got you. They've still got. Oh, that. sure. Because this and is the Linux. political this is battle. Linux solution. I, I the political you. battle is still there to fight. I got you. Um, all you need is a Pixie capable network interface, and you don't need a local hard drive. If you have a local hard drive. It can you can use it as some temp swap. storage. So yeah, some swap storage. Can you theoretically do this Linux on your desktop and for specific Windows only apps do the Citrix client on that to pull your Windows only app in? <laughs> yeah. Yes, you could. <laughs> oh, okay. I Why not? Sure I wasn't talking out my hands. Well, um, that's very interesting. Can run on any OS that's supported by Sun Java. So the the server piece is what I'm talking about here. It can run on anything, so it'll run. I haven't done it, but theoretically, it should run on a Mac. You could run this on a Mac server as your back end, Windows, Linux, any flavor of Linux, so long as you've got Java. It's horrible, Java 6. I'm old school. <laughs> as to long the core! Original. As long as I can. The OG son. <laughs> Libra. What's it? Libra Office? Libra right? Office. Libra yeah. Office. Libra. In case those don't know, Sun off, Sun Star Office, Mike, uh, Open Office. Open Office. They, office they took the first move before Oracle did. Yeah, Oracle's going to kill it off. Don't worry. Yes, Jerks. Um, then clients are green, <clears throat> and I know green is that word that everybody's using, but guys, it is. Um, your hardware weighs about 70% less than normal PCs and takes about 80% less transportation volume. I say half the energy of a normal PC, but it can be even. It's, it's going to be lower because you don't need. I mean, look at look at what you're sitting in front of right now. What do you think this is using to a traditional PC that you've got at the house, especially like mine, which is about 60 watts. <laughs> See? Yeah, these are pretty small. These are small, but they're the still un- fat clients. But they're still yeah. a fat client, but still, your energy savings here yeah. are significant. Going to LCDs is huge. No, <laughs> there's um, political. there's a there's political forces at play. I keep losing battles, but by God, I'm gonna keep fighting because I'm going to win this war. And it <laughs> is a war. Or quit. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Is that <laughs> it's a war. <laughs> I I won't acknowledge that one right now. Um. I'm not going to give up because I know this is the right way to go. What's and the resistance? Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office is the resistance. Period. Microsoft Office is the resistance. Well, the colleges are teaching Microsoft Office, so we have to teach it. You know what? And pardon my French, bullshit. You teach a kid how to do something. You don't teach them in one application so they're fluent in one application. You teach them how to be fluent in the concepts, not this. Here's where you click to do this. What does that have to do with anybody whose office doesn't like Because I can't run Microsoft Office on Linux. Because the open think line is Linux only. Yeah. The Citrix stuff's expensive. All I'm doing is shifting my costs. I'm still spending the same money. Or more. <laughs> Maybe his college. <laughs> this is the argument I get back all the time. 
But like I said, it's it's an argument. It's it's a it's a battle. I lose battles, but I haven't lost the war. I will win this. I know I will, because it's the right way to do this. You know, why do I why do I need to spend? And I'm a taxpayer in Millard. Why do I have to spend four hundred thousand dollars a year so that I have the privilege to use Microsoft Office and use Windows? Really? Please. Where can we better spend that money? Aren't there other things we can put that towards? Yes. Because this snowballs. I've got Microsoft Office on this box with Microsoft Windows. Well, that means I can't use this application on this that would be free that we could use to teach kids this concept or this application versus, okay, I've got to go purchase this application. So instead of a $400,000 problem, I've now got a $4 million problem. This is where I see, this is the problem I see, and this is the mindset that I've got to change. And I'm, I'm little by little, I'm changing it. I'm, I'm getting people to think a little differently. But I'm the token long hair guy, so I've got to do everything I can. Um, Nick Beard. What's that? Nick Beard. Nick Beard. <laughs> don't let me pit, don't don't make me put my hair down. Um, like you were saying, Adam, look, supporting Zen app, Zen desktop, and Framework View Open Client. There you go. Right on Open Thin Client. So for those people that require Open Office right. or uh, Microsoft Office, I can go this route. Or that one weird proprietary <coughs> Windows app that you can't shake for whatever reason. Petamation. Still support it. The uh, the accounting software that we use. There you go. That's been my bane for my stoneware. That's the one app that is my. Is that always the one that's always the bane of everyone's existence? The accounting, the accounting software. software. Yeah. Accounting, yep. uh, exactly right. That's my gold chalice right now. <clears throat> to find a way to get give access to the administrators to this Pentamation client from anywhere through the through the Stonework through the portal. When I do that, I get every building's buy-in because these people now don't have to VPN in and play that game. They don't have to. There's all these things that I can get rid of, making their lives easier. It makes my life a little harder, but it's making my life harder, not yeah. two, three, four hundred people. Right. Um, this is cool. Support for Open LDAP. Um, Samba sure, shares. Yeah. Samba shares can be accessed via Nautilus. You can boot from local media and touchscreen devices. Oh, or support for Active Directory integration, as far as that goes. If you need that, you know, I mean, it's Linux, right? Yeah. Have it off against. Now, like I said, it is tweaked. Yeah, but still, though. I mean, it's still PAM, right, from an authentication standpoint. I believe so. Um, they do have Open Office already built into it, already set up, so you can use that as to see how they do applications so that you can do other applications. Oh, okay. Um, the VIA, NVIDIA, and ATI drivers are already included. Nice. And then I went to their website too on openthinplan.com. They have, that's where they actually sell hardware specific for this. It looked like <coughs> certified thin clients yeah. like the Weiss one and the HP one and that work specifically with this. Yeah. Okay, so my knowledge of No Machine was limited, so I pretty much stole from their website. <laughs> the wiki. Acquired, borrowed. <clears throat> to the wiki. No, you cited them. You're good. There oh, we yeah. go. See, That's I good. just. That's good point. You cited um, them. This is um, Mosaic. That's the company. Mosaic. Um, not the netware Mosaic, but there is a company in Omaha called Mosaic, yeah. and their primary purpose is helping. Um, Mentally challenged yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They live exclusively off no machine. No kidding. Their whole business is no machine. All of their mm. sites run no machine, and they do it all. They anything on the sites they do a lot of almost all of it over the 3G Sprint cards. When we looked at this two and a half years ago, they were using the Sprint cards for when people traveled to be able to get back in. And I'm not kidding. It was quicker than our stuff. It was quicker than our fat clients, by far. And they were going over Sprint's wireless to uh, CoCentury, where they keep their servers. And they don't have beefy servers. These guys, you want to talk about operating on a lean budget. These guys were, bu their new machines were the stuff they w were getting off of eBay and out of government surplus four, five, six-year-old machines. They had stations where they, uh, uh, where they spent their monies, they had stations where they cloned drives just to get the basic OS on them. They had a, they'd throw Ubuntu on the box. They'd have three logins, tech, um, 
guest and staff or no tech staff and add tech staff and admin so your administrators had a specific desktop that with a few applications staff had no applications all of their stuff came through no machine and then tech had full access to whatever they needed on the box but it, it, had anybody heard about this company before today the, no machine. I've heard about ads okay um, Take like a look six at this. Years ago, yeah. This is not real expensive. I mean, it's that, to me, it's that in between the no cost open thin client. It should be in the repos. Openthinclient.org. It is. Is that is that entry level? You can do everything you need, but you're kind of on your own. No machines. That middle so guy. To go into the no time. machine is a little guy. Middle I guy. think mm. there's an open source version of NX. Is there? I think so. I, I think it's free NX or something like that. Free NX. I was reading about like putting X on the Pogo plug or the Shiva plug. They said mm. to use NX to access it, and they were okay. recommending using OpenNX. So okay. This wasn't that NX. expensive. All things considered, I was when we were looking at this and we started figuring out what it was going to cost us to do to do the service on the back end and, and, and do this, it wasn't really expensive. I don't remember what the cost was, but it was reasonable. Um, but again, we hit we hit pushback from from the political forces because. I couldn't run Microsoft Office. So um, it does work really well over dial-up and 3G sprint cards. And it was fast. I mean, I think it was about 20 to 25 seconds to get to boot a machine and be logged in and functioning. I mean, it was insane how quick it was. Um, it does use SSH public key encryption, 128-bit random cookie. Um, there is a free version that allows two connections, so you could run it on a machine at the house. And then there's the advanced cluster cluster edition, which was, yeah, wow. Um, supports KDE, GNOME, Firefox, OpenOffice. There's a complete list of applications that are supported already, and it's const they're constantly adding apps that are supported within it. If you're looking at thin client type items. Definitely look at these guys and give them a chance. They do a good job. They do a really good job. Have you um, ever looked at N computing? Keep watching. That's what. Okay, that's what I thought this was. No, said it, but this is not. different. Yeah. Um, Tunnels and Linux multimedia. I guess and when we tested it, worked really well. It wasn't real hard to set up. Um, very quick logins, quick screen updates, and like I said, Mosaic. Um, they're over on um, on Q Street and 120th. Yeah, 120th. Real nice guys. They came over and showed, demoed it to us. We went over there twice, and they came over to our place to show our tech team, our tech team, three times. The guys were really nice and, and generous in their time. So like I said, I couldn't cover everything, but Damn. those are the ones I did cover. So here's some others. You got your LTSP, which is the Linux Terminal Server Project. You got N Computing, VNC, and X11. N yeah. Computing is Nicholas Negroponte's deal. That's the company that he started back oh. in 06. Okay. Okay. To address the, you know, to get into the thin client. The oil PC. Yeah. One part of that. Right. What you got, N Computing bud? does hardware also. Yeah. That's kind of primarily how they make their money, and yeah. it's from the hardware, yeah. I played with one of their boxes. Okay. Well, a few of their boxes. They're pretty nice. I haven't yeah. seen one. That, that's that's neat. They're teeny. They're, they're bigger than those. Uh, Do you remember that the box panos? Things, back in like early 2000s? But they're thinner. Right? There's like some black really? box. And, and they stream media real well. I couldn't cool. remember the name of that was. Um, hardware? It was like that 10 little, zig? There's one of those 10 zigs I mean, in the back. It's similar to that. I wasn't even aware of those until like 150 bucks. Tony was like, yeah, we'll bring one of these too. I'm going, Okay, I'll go add that to the list. <laughs> um, we got everything set up back here. If you want to play with them and see how they function, by all means. If you're not looking at desktop virtualization where you work, why? You should be looking at it. And if anything, putting it on your five-year, ten-year plan. You should be looking at this. There's I'll no tell my reason. boss about it. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, He's I'll even help you. <laughs> I know I've been yakking now for quite a while. We've got about seven minutes before eight, and I want to be... Make sure I give you, you know, cognizant of your guys' time. So, what other questions you got? Oh, no. 
Is there any cheesecake left? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. More There's cheesecake back, back there than you can shake a stick there at. There better be something. <laughs> and I can promise All you, you're taking some home to my wife. We're missing the cheesecake. The cheesecake was phenomenal. Cheesecake factory. <laughs> yeah, um, be here to taste it. Yeah. Right. Eagle Software. Send thank yous to them. Thank I know I'm going to. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Oh, enticing the Ustream video. Sneaking a piece in. There you go. Well, if there's no questions, like I said, you guys go ahead and take a look That's at the great. devices in the back for a little bit. Well, I'd say definitely, keep, I mean, you're obviously, in your job right now, sounds like further along than uh, anybody else is on this whole virtualization thing. Definitely, and I know you will, you know, keep us all abreast of how it goes and what roadblocks you're running into. I mean, there's nothing better to learn than from a case study. We'll make you uh, uh, break the trail for us and figure out all the things that don't work and things that do work. And then we'll learn from your mistakes and do it in half the time. So thanks, Craig. Oh, I appreciate yeah, you. You're welcome. <laughs> Being out there You're welcome. Um, along with the thin clients, like I said, if anybody is truly looking at stuff and want to give access to their people, look at Stoneware 2. Look at Stoneware 2. It's a great complement to all of this stuff that we're looking at. You could go so far as to have open thin client with nothing on it and then run Stoneware on top of it and run all your stuff from the server and from anywhere because you'd have the same view regardless of where you go. Look at Stoneware as part of this. And Wherever you go, there you it are. It complements everything are. I talked about. Stone-ware.com. Yep. Hooray! Awesome, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. Craig. Thanks, Craig. Thank I do not have any information for next month's meeting as of yet. This will be the first Tuesday. Uh, I know Rob Townley had asked somebody to present on Pam. Oh. I do not know Brian a terrible Watson. amount about Brian. Brian's a Pam expert. That's true. He's, he reads the mailing list too. Pam, Pam, he's so our man. Your uh, USB. I should plug it in and see if it Linux works. Right <laughs> it should. It should. So, um, thanks for watching. I'm gonna grab the laptop and I'm gonna walk towards the back. Bye. No, probably not. Man, that's hot. These are still fairly cool. I can probably just do this. <laughs> These are all the little boxes. Pretty stuff, but they don't make it for cool. He wants to build his own little thin plant system in our house. Yeah. We'll see. We can get some old ones. Okay, good night.